What up YouTube, Topaz Yates back for another review and this one is to that Offset The Last Rocket and I'm giving this one a good like even though it is exactly what I thought it would be you feel me? A uh, subpar project that you can just tell didn't have like the love and care in it that really needed to be it just feels like a mixtape where you know, Offset just recorded the first 11 songs that he could come up with and just threw it together and put it out there and that's his solo album. When, you know, solo albums are usually supposed to be special to an individual. But that's not the way that the Migos and such record the records. These solo projects that they've been releasing, man, it goes to show you there's a reason why they're a group. Because when they're together... They have released music that have shape-shifted the culture for as we see it. Love them or hate them. You feel me? But individually, and I'm going back to the Offset album as well, man. There's not really anything on both of these projects that's really that special. And I know a lot of people was anticipating this project, you feel me? A lot of people believe in, you know, Offset is like the Jada Kiss of the locks. He's like the standout number one guy of it, man. But to be real with you... I see them all as equals. None of them are strong lyrically, man, but they feed off of each other and they have the right energy that they can create individual songs that get people bouncing and change the culture based off of the terminology and the whole vibe. That's the strip. But take away individuals from it, you get projects like this. But let's go ahead and break this joint on down, man. Starting with the things that I really have issues with. Starting with the song, None To Me. Well, the concept of it could have been cool if he could have followed through with it. Well, the basic concept here is the money, the sex, the clothes, the fancy, everything that I got. That doesn't mean anything at all to me. The thing that really matters to Offset is the loyalty that he has amongst his crew. And you know, I would believe that if you didn't have on every song you talking about Patek or you talking about everything like this in this particular song. You feel me? Like you could have got really deep, but you never did at any point of this entire project. I mean, look at the song Casper all the way through. He's talking about nothing more than ghosts riding a whip and stuff. You feel me? Like, how could you say that none of this means anything to you, but it's the only thing that you talk about? That's like LeBron saying, you know, I really don't care about basketball, but yet everything you do in life is all around basketball. That's where you got to where you are, basketball. And I'm not trying to make the comparison to skill set or anything like that because... Obviously, Offset is not that good. But, bruh, don't try to fool anybody and say that all you care about is loyalty and all that when all you talk about is your watch, your cars, your women, all of that. Like, you ain't got nothing else to say. And you see the same thing in that track, I Remember, where the basic concept of this was supposed to be reminiscing on the times where you were starving and you was trying to come up in the game and you had to go into drug dealing and all that. You're remembering that, but yet, at the same time, you're constantly talking about this protect. You're constantly talking about this money and the drugs that you're taking and all of that. You feel me? Like, this was another instance where he had the opportunity to deliver some substance, but he's obviously not a substance-like individual. He just doesn't have that skill set. And I said it before, another thing that he does not have in his skill set is actual quality punchlines either. Like, lyricism is just not there for any of these individuals. But I will say he does have a few moments on this project that was kind of decent. Like how he said, my diamonds are dancing like the Temptations. Not a great punchline, but yet, if you remember, like, the Temptations movie or anything like that, you saw all they did was dance the whole way, and he's trying to make references to how shiny his diamonds are. That, that was I. How he said, I two-timed the Patek, as he just constantly is going to talk about this watch. But he also two-toned the Cuban, two-toned the whip, riding with a two-toned chick. Well, that's him attempting a wordplay, but doing it all the way wrong. But yet, it was entertaining enough to get a mention, but not a very good lyric. But of course, there's a lot of terrible lyricism to go along with this, to the point that it's super comical. 
You feel me? Like how he's saying, I'm going to get this bread like potatoes. I need them chips. How he said, the way I ball, I'm going to make Curry my agent. See, because I'm the Tom Brady of the NFL. I'm the black Slim Shady. Like, bruh. That's terrible because you're drawing these comparisons that you have no right to draw a comparison to. You feel me? Like, you're doing your thing. You're super successful for this generation. We're not going to deny that you shape-shifted music, but don't ever compare yourself to people who are skillful at their craft when all you got are ad-libs, fam. How he said, yo, I ghost ride the whip and got you thinking that you saw Casper. Like, come on, bruh. And we all know what you're trying to say here, but it's not very good. As Casper the Friendly Ghost, you're trying to make a reference to that, but at what point was this an actual quality punchline? Really, there's only two songs off this that I actually enjoyed, and the first one being Lead the Wave, where I love the production, I like the flow that he's doing, and I like a lot of things that he's saying, even though it's not lyrical, even though it's not punchline related, but ultimately he's giving some real talk here because he's trying to lead the wave of the future generation trying to show these people how to go out here and get it, how to be successful. And he's hitting them with a few things that, you know, you really should do. Like, don't ever be around people who are making less than a hundred. And he's not talking bills, he's talking a hundred thousand. But, I mean, not so much on that monetary level, but when you break it down, like you want to be around people who are super successful, who's out here getting it. Not necessarily making a ton of money, $100,000 and all that, because it's not easy to be around those types of people consistently. But if you're around people that's getting it, a lot of that will rub off on you and you'll be able to find your own way later. Like, that's some real talk. How he said that you can't put people on once you get so famous. And, you know, I agree and disagree with that to a degree, you feel me? Because when you're successful like that, like, you ain't got nothing else to do but to put other people on, but yet you got to do it smart, though. Like, you can't just throw money behind people and just hope that it happens. Like, you need to actually put in the work like you put in the work to build yourself up to get super famous. But at the end of the day, man, you got to realize that you can't do for someone that they're not doing for themselves. No matter how famous you are, no matter how much money you got, you can't just overtly say, okay... I'm rich and famous, so therefore I can make anybody around me rich and famous. Takeoff also said for these individual rappers that's coming up, stop with the mumbling, which that's real talk. People been trying to tell these individuals to stop that for a while because that just shows you you're not taking your craft serious enough to actually make an attempt to make quality music. Another real talk thing that Takeoff said here was overtly don't hold grudges. Like he didn't say that, but yet he made it. Like, as an example, as he's saying in the song, he leads by example and such. And the example that he's setting is he had a teacher that didn't really like the direction that he was going and stunted on him and said he was never going to make it. And he came across him while he's super successful and all that. And instead of stunting on him and clowning him and all that, he rolled up on him like, yo, what's up? What's good? Congratulations on everything that you're doing. And, you know, that's just real talk. Like, why hold a grudge? The best forms of revenge is being super successful and overtaking what individuals thought that you never could become. And there's no point in you rubbing it in because they're going to feel bad about it to begin with. And which, that's all real talk. Done on a super quality production, man. My favorite song probably off this joint. And the only other song that I really enjoyed was that Infatuation, where this has that uh, up-tempo, R&B, like a skate rink-like feel to it, which is cool because it's super different from all of the other tracks that Takeoff have released on this particular project. As this song is clearly a dedication to Cardi B right here, where he's saying pretty much all the money, success, and all of this stuff that he got is theirs together. He overtly loves this person and how he said that you can be my stripper. I'm never going to be ashamed 
obviously with Cody B being a stripper in her past and all of that stuff, man, and he ended up wifing it up, like, this is overtly his dedication song to her, and he did a pretty good job with it. I'm not knocking it at all. It is what it is. There's somebody for everybody. I'm just saying, I would never wife up a stripper. You're asking for a lot of problems by doing that, but whatever. Overall, man, this project is exactly what you should have thought it was going to be. I'm gonna give this project a 4 out of 10. Worth a listen, like, there's a couple songs on here that's pretty decent, but nothing really worth keeping. It's really disappointing, I guess, for all the Migos fans who were hoping that Takeoff was going to do a super dope project when, nah. You should have saw it from the jump. He wasn't going to do that. It ain't nothing more than a mixtape that they're just pumping out there. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there. And you can go to DownloadPads.com. That's down there to read today's article.